How's it going everybody? This is Beat the Bush. Today I'm going to talk about if an engineering degree is worth it. Now I've worked in engineering for over eight years in the Silicon Valley, so you can't say I just went in for one year and just decided to quit all of it together. This is a very, very solid engineering career and I graduated from UCLA with a master's degree. The reason I'm bringing this up is because I've been cleaning up my garage. I've been cleaning out the homework problems I have. I still have them from my college years. It probably is a problem, the fact that I even have this sort of like collecting everything that I've ever owned. I did say that I'm not a minimalist, but I'm doing my best to try to get rid of more and more stuff. So in the process, I was looking through uh, the problem sets in my engineering courses. This one is math 132. There's like some sort of Laplace transform stuff in here. After so many years in the industry, I look at all the problems that it asks you to do and basically it's not fresh in my memory anymore. I don't know how to do it. If you give me a test, I would probably fail it and maybe only do like 10% of it right. Now I feel like most engineers are like that as well, unless you are in a profession that uses a lot of that particular type of math. If you're sending rockets up into space or maybe your profession does have a lot of math involved in it, like calculus or whatnot. Then in those instances, you would probably remember everything that you normally do every single day, but things that you haven't used for five years, 10 years, you probably forgot about them. And if you were to one day need to use it, you probably have to refresh your memory a little bit. Now, realistically, working at my job day to day, sometimes there are days where you can completely be stupid, can't even communicate or something, and you can still get by. In other words, you don't need any of that education. Some days you just go in, you respond to a few emails, everyone can do that. And basically you're not using all that much thinking power uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. Now you might come to the same thought as well, if we don't use everything that we use in engineering school while we are at our professions, how come they don't just teach us what we need to know instead? Teach us something practical so that when we are at our professions, we can just use those instead. The problem with the whole system basically is that when you're gearing up to learn to be an electrical engineer, you're basically doing a blanket approach. You're learning everything about every single sub career in electrical engineering. As you know, in electrical engineering, there's a lot of different little things that you can do. You can be a compliance engineer, you can be a product engineer, you can do an RF engineer, you can do a firmware engineer, a lot of different little subtopics. Now I have to say, if you are only learning for one particular type of engineer, for example, you want to be a firmware engineer, then you might be able to get through an engineering program that only teaches you about firmware. Let's say you need to learn about assembly, you need to learn some fundamentals about electronics, just in case you need to interface some electronics to that firmware, then I argue that you probably only need to be in school about six months to learn everything that you need to know to be very, very good at your job already. The rest of the time, in other words, three and a half years extra that you are just learning stuff for the sake of learning stuff, you basically don't use for the rest of your life, really. I would have to say in my engineering career, there's not very many instances where I can recall that I have to know how to do calculus. And even when I had to know how to do it, I kind of fumble a little bit. I have to go, oh, how did I did that one again? And certainly you never need to know how to do an integration of E to the two to the X or something like that. All those contrived examples, there's no practical use for it basically. Now I'm not exactly advocating to shrink down the engineering program all the way only down to six months because there is a very real danger with this. If you train to be one tiny specific type of engineer, firmware engineer, okay, then you'll only be able to do a firmware engineer. So if they lay you off, then you have to go back and look for another job as a firmware engineer. And sometimes in the industry or in, over time, um, industry changes. Maybe one day they won't have firmware engineers anymore. Maybe uh, it might morph into something else. Having an engineering degree where they teach you basically about everything, you can start off as a firmware engineer and later on you can do a hardware engineer maybe. I personally switch the type of engineer I am. I started as a firmware engineer. I did uh, assembly program and C programming. I did some RF tuning, which is completely different from firmware engineering. I switched over to an application engineer even, and then I did some analog design, and then I switched over to a system engineering. So I would say system engineering 
probably required all those little different things that I did because I had to do firmware engineering, analog design, etc. So just know that when you're doing your engineering degree, yes, you're definitely learning a lot of stuff that you probably won't apply in your day to day career. But it's sort of like an insurance program for you where after you are done with one particular type of engineering, perhaps you can uh, still say, hey, you know, I have this piece of paper, I am an electrical engineer, then you can switch over to another job that it's also uh, requires an electrical engineering degree, but does something quite a bit different. Now, there are different things that I wish the school taught me, for example, laying out a circuit board. If you think about it, as an electrical engineer, you should know how to do this, like maybe even a simple one. Maybe you don't have to use like the full fledged program. There are programs where it teaches people that are not electrical engineers at all to how to lay out a circuit board. But I guess the type of engineer that I personally like to be is to be a well-rounded one where you can uh, be a standalone company, basically. You yourself can design something, go lay out a board, go order the parts and put it all together, and then you can have a final product. In other words, from A to Z, you can have an electronic product that can work. Unfortunately, most of the degrees these days, they teach you how to become an engineer within a company, not a contractor where you are fully self-contained. This is just the way it is. And if you want to learn something like that, well, you have to go learn it yourself. Now, is an engineering degree worth it? I personally don't earn all that much more money than an electrical engineer right now. Maybe I might earn more later on, I'm not sure. But I have to say the bulk of my net worth did come from electrical engineering. So I would say, yeah, you know, getting a master's degree definitely helped a little bit. It helped me in getting my first job. It's that piece of paper that gets you in the door because you need this ticket to get your job. Just think of it that way. Once you have this piece of paper, then they'll pay you a lot. Be it if you're gonna use all this information or not. Most of the time, once you jump into your first job, you're likely not gonna use 99% of the information that you learned in school. In fact, you probably have to learn at the job whatever you need to do. And this is just the way it works these days. I hope this was helpful for those of you getting your engineering degree and you're going, ah, oh, yeah, you know, I'm not gonna use this in the future. So why should you uh, try so hard to learn it? It's because when you get good grades, then you can get a better job. So let's ask right now, am I using a lot of my engineering knowledge um, in making these YouTube videos? The answer is no. But sometimes when I fix electronic items, I do need to know a little bit of engineering. So thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to give me a like on this video. Comment down below. Let me know if this gives you a little bit of context if you're getting your engineering degree right now. Don't forget to push that subscribe button and ring that bell icon. Thanks for watching.